right. Thank you, Alec. That was awesome. Yes, it was. Thank you very much. We don't have a typical beginning, do we? Never. Music is too, never just... Too many just, talented musicians. Ooh, it is awesome. Good morning. We do want to welcome you to Trinity Evangelical today. We're so glad that you are here to worship with us. While the sun is shining bright, and the sun shines bright in here, S-O-N, all the time. That's right. No all boats in the parking lot this week. That's awesome. That's right. That's right. We, we could drive to church. That's we didn't right. have to you row. You bring your car. We didn't have to row to church today. So if you're a guest with us today, we'd love for you to take the tarot part of the bulletin, fill it out, drop it in the offering plate, or take it out to the Welcome Center. Helps us get to know you a little bit better. And if you have any prayer requests, any of you whatsoever, put those on that sign up and that tear off part, and then we'll pray for you and pray with you for the things that are on your heart this week. We have some ministry ops to share. This Friday is our teenagers' monthly potluck following Bible study on Friday. So if you would like to be part of the teenagers' potluck and you don't even know what that is, just show up. Just show up. And, and, and if you don't bring anything to eat, there'll be enough food there you'll have for lim- you to eat. Probably and have then, Bertha's Lemon Lush, I'm sure. Yeah. That's what yeah. we're hoping for. That's what we're hoping for, aren't we? Yes. Bertha yeah. says not this week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Bertha is having knee replacement surgery tomorrow morning. Okay. I'm not so sad up here, okay. but I'm just telling you. I'm not telling okay. them. Okay. So we're aware of Thanks that. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, I, I, I thought you might want to know that. So come on out on, on Friday. Um, Bible studies at 10, and then at 11 o'clock or so, they'll be having the potluck right across the hallway. It'll be awesome time. That's awesome. And you know what's happening next Sunday at 8 a.m.? Steve Sturgeon is actually speaking at Old Mission Church at 8 a.m. So if you want to get a double dose of Jesus, you know, you can go there at 8 a.m., come back here at 10 or 11, 15. So uh, I'm sure he's going to be humbled and honored to get to speak and preach out there. So Steve Sturgeon next week at Old Mission. Really excited for that. It is awesome. Now, if you see Dean Clausing sometime this summer, I just want you to know that Dean Clausing, who plays the organ out at Old Mission Church, this is his 35th year of playing the organ for the morning services in the summer at Old Mission Church. So you might see Dean and say, hey, thank you so much for all that you've done for us. For next Sunday, being June the 30th, is a fifth Sunday. Woo. So we're having fifth Sunday here at Trinity, which means during 10 and 11, 15 service, we'll be doing family-friendly service. There'll be no Sunday school for kindergarten through 12th grade. We'll be in here worshiping together. The kids will be leading some worship. It's just an awesome time. So make sure that even if you come to 8.30, stick around for 10 or 11.15 and worship together as one big family. Guess what? What? Guess what we're going to do at 6 o'clock that night right after? We get to put on our swim trunks, you and I, and go swimming at the park. We get to go swimming at the park. Yes, it's fifth Sunday at the park from 6 to 8. We get to put on our swimming truck. There's going to be lots of food. It's free at Harrison Smith Park. You it's and a me. Party. Harrison swim Smith. Trunks. Harrison Smith is a relative to a lot of the people here in our church. We're talking about family. We're going to his park to celebrate fifth Sunday and families. It all ties together. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. Six to eight. And you don't, after about five weeks of telling them to bring their grills, you don't have to bring your grill because the food's already going to be there. So just come out and have an absolutely fantastic time. It is exciting. Make sure you take time to read your bulletin, check the featured ministry table, just find out all the things that are going on in this church and see where you might plug in to do God's work through this people. Amen. You it's greeting time. time. It's it greeting is greeting time. time. Yes. So we get it to stand is. up, give high fives, hugs, and yeah. fist bumps were appropriate. So awesome. go find somebody you love and give them a high five. Thanks, brother. Oh, 
Father God, you are an awesome God. And Father, we do thank you so much that no matter where we're at, no matter what we face, no matter what troubles lie ahead, no matter what blessings are given to us, we can always turn and know that you are right there with us. Father, we can always, always know that no matter how dark the night is, your light will shine within us. Father, we always know that no matter how rough the road is, that you are always there to lead us and to guide us. Father, even though we reach the mountaintops, we pray that in those moments we will remember that it is you who leads us there. Father, it's when we're in the valleys that we pray that we know that you're the one who will guide us out. Father, we just come to you and we worship you and we praise you and we thank you for all, all that you do in our lives. We thank you for every opportunity that you give us to share your love with those around us. Father, we thank you for every chance that we have to be your light that shines into this world. Father, we thank you for your love, your unconditional love your love, that there is nothing that we could do to earn it. There is nothing that we could do to lose it, that your love will be there for us, that it's the same today as it was yesterday, as it was the day before, as it will be tomorrow and forevermore. And Father, we pray that you would teach us to love one another that same way. Father, that our love would come from our heart, not from our emotions. The Father, each and every moment of each and every day that we would choose to follow you, that we would choose to love one another, that we would choose to grow more and more to be the men and women you created us to be. Father, we come to you today and we lay at your feet those special prayer requests that are on our hearts. Father, the people in our lives who we know need special prayers, whether it's because they're sick and they need healing, or whether it's because they're discouraged and they need encouragement, Father, whether they need guidance, whether, whatever it is that they need, Father, we bring them before we, you and we lay them at your feet. Father, we bring our hearts, our prayer requests to you. Father, the things in our lives that we need to give to you. Father, we ask for your forgiveness for the times this past week where we fell short. And we pray for the strength and the courage to turn and walk away from those things. That you would be our guide. Father, we thank you most of all this day for your son Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your willingness to give your one and only son to come to this earth. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for your willingness to come and walk this earth as a man, to be an example for each and every one of us. To take our sins to that cross. To die a death as a sacrifice for each of us. Mm, but not to let death win. To be raised from the dead. To ascend to heaven. And to teach us that a relationship with you helps us to know that we know that we know that we will spend eternity in heaven with you. 
Father, it is out of that love and that respect for Jesus that we come to you today and we pray the way he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, We're going to continue in worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. If you're a guest with us today, just know that your presence with us today is your present, your gift to us. And we thank you so much for joining us. For those of you who are regular attenders and regular givers, we want to say thank you so much for your hearts, for the ministries of this church, for all the things that God can do through us because of your generosity. So while Ken blesses us with special music, the ushers will take up the offer. Thanks, Ken. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing on my own. I make mistakes. I often slip. Just common flesh and bone. But I'll prove someday. Just why I say I'm of a special kind. For when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. The look of
so, Lord, we are grateful for every good gift you have first given to us. Lord, remove us from our own selfishness. Lord, loosen the grip that we have on things that will not go with us into eternity. And so help us to share and find your generosity in our spirit, that as we give to you, we might find greater purpose and greater joy that this world could never offer. So take these gifts and all who gave them and use them to build your kingdom here and forevermore. For we give you thanks and praise in Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Invite you to remain standing as we'll uh, sing together again as we get ready to do that. If you'd like to head out to Lambs this morning, you are invited to do so. As uh, we send out our kids this morning, we'll sing together. a beautiful Sunday, a beautiful weekend as a whole to come and worship. As we talked about our offering here a minute ago, just a couple of thoughts. At the end of service today, I'm going to invite you if you'd like to come pray. Uh, There are some prayer cards up here on the altar rails. Uh, Prayer is an act of offering. And so as we give our money generously, so also know that we can give our prayers generously. And uh, this uh, whole summer, we're talking about families, and so the prayer cards are a prayer for families. If, uh, if your family has any place of prayer at all, which might be all of us, right? There are prayer cards, and you can come pick those up. Uh, some of you are going to tell me the altar rails are backwards, but I just, I just want to demonstrate this because uh, they're not. For some of you who can't get all the way down and then back up again, we turn the prayer rails around so you don't have to kneel. You can just come up here and stand. So they're not backwards. They're, they just, we don't want it to get stuck. Right? So if you want to kneel, you can, use, uh, you can use these that have the kneeler piece. And if you just want to stand, you can use uh, the two that uh, seem to be turned around backwards, but they're not. It's intentional to give you the chance to be able to pray. Now, also, as uh, we think about how God works, I want to lift up a few of our folks who are doing mission trips or uh, our youth who are just back. Uh, Shane and Kalia, uh, Bryce and Alec are just back from Never the Same Camp uh, and so had a great week uh, with our youth. Our thanks to those of you who supported that youth trip. Uh, in a few weeks, Shane and Kalia and a, a number of others, I think at 39 total, are headed with the senior high 
to Myrtle Beach for a week of camp together, uh, out there of transformation camp. And so they appreciate all of your support that makes it possible for all of them to go. Uh, It just so happens here in this service today, both uh, Carl Mullins and Kent Zellner are here. Uh, Carl is leading the Honduras mission trip in February, and they hope to have 18 who will go on that trip. Uh, And Kent and Kathy uh, up front here, you don't normally come to 8.30, so it was just interesting. They didn't know when to stand or sit down, right? I could see all of them. I felt bad for you. I wanted to come over and sit with you, so... Uh, we'll stand one last time at the hymn when we finish, that's it. So uh, uh, Kent uh, is leading the Mexico mission trip here this fall. A uh, couple of, I don't know, it's been what, two months since we had our chili cook-off? Uh, and in that one chili cook-off, they raised all the money they need for the Mexico team to go. And so our thanks for your generosity at the chili cook-off. Uh, the Honduras team will be the next team raising funds to go to Honduras and we would love to make it as, as easy as possible for folks from our church to go and have those mission experiences. So uh, be in prayer then for, uh, for the Honduras team as they raise funds, for our senior high as they go to Camp Mexico as they go uh, in September. Uh, our deep thanks to all of you for that. Uh, this morning we have a missionary. Uh, is that a thumbs up, Bryce? Yes. So we have a missionary from uh, India who's back with us, Philip Nair. Uh, And so uh, Philip, uh, I believe, has his family over here on FaceTime. So Philip, are you in the room? Oh, there you are. It's hard to see with light. No, you come all the way up. There you go. You come up and share and uh, pray for us. Uh, And then we want to be able to pray for you. Uh, He's got uh, his uh, family and folks that he works with on FaceTime from India this morning, we hope. And uh, so would you welcome Philip this morning as he comes to share with us? Can you hear me? Okay. Good morning, church. The little girl whom you are seeing there is my daughter, Rachel. And she helps with the orphanage which I run in India. I'm basically here to tell you a humble thank you. Because your church, thanks be to God for Pastor Jim and all those who stand by us, does send an offering yearly once. It helps pay for the rice. Our whole year's rice is literally what you send us. And I need to say a humble thanks to you. But this morning, God has laid on my heart to just show you my orphanage for a couple of minutes. Those are all my children you see there in the background. We have 24 special needs children. You can see some of them. They are all sitting on the floor for lack of having enough seating. But basically, Buddy, can you hear me? I'm sorry, doesn't seem to connect. Hello, Buddy, can you hear me? Rachel? Okay. Those children have been given to me by the government of India because the juvenile homes don't have enough facilities for these type of children. Actually, most of the children are not criminal in background, but because they have special needs and their parents may be in another prison, these children are basically in my orphanage given to me by the government. And by the grace of God, we have these children with us for the past four and a half years. This is the last batch that we have right now with us. I want to say a humble Thanks for those who pray. Pray that these kids get healed. Can you put Gideon on, please? Gideon? I'll show you a couple of my kids who are... One or two. Put Gideon on. Okay, Gideon is a blind child whom you're seeing right now with the yellow shirt. 
His feet are all gone, like he can't walk. Almost nine of my children are on diapers. It's a big job. We have only three staff. Thanks be to God for a good gentleman of your town who stands by a paycheck for all my workers. The Lord has been gracious. I am, like I told Bryce and Pastor Jim, I'm here to basically tell a word of thanks. Gratitude is the thing that I always believe in. And God has been good to us through your church and by the ministry of the Trinity for the past 15 years at least. And that check has come in every Christmas or later or before. But definitely the church has blessed us. I want to say a huge prayer for you. But those of you who want to listen to the word of the Lord, the Lord told me to share this morning a verse from Revelation chapter 2. Your labor has been recognized by God. Your patience has been recognized by God. Your love for God has been recognized by God. And your affirmation that you love God has been in the sight of God. But God says, you have checked those who call themselves servants of his kingdom and you have tried them out and proved those who are good. And God is happy with these things. But, but, he says, you have forgotten your first love. You are not doing the things that you really earlier used to do when you were a new believer. When was the last time you fasted and prayed? I'm not asking hands. Pray more. The time is coming that Jesus Christ is going to come any moment. Look at the signs around you. Look at the prophecies which are happening. It is very short. Mark my words. Taking care of orphans is only a bit of saying thank you to God. It's not going to earn you salvation. Doing a good deed, giving away food, is not going to give you your salvation. Believing on the holy blood of Jesus, which removes your sin, is all that matters. That is all that the devil fears. Believe me, brothers, you people are favored. You are not persecuted like my country. The early part of this year, when we had a little church meeting outside our church, four elders of the village came and told me, close up in 15 minutes or you're going to get a bad deal. When I started building my church, the church sent me almost $1,500 and helped pay for the roof of our church. The elders of the village came to me then and said, your God is not our God. But I told them, there is one God, like you have one father. And God allowed me to continue building the church. They couldn't stop me building the church. For whatever be the reasons, the police came and helped me and God was grateful. I am grateful to God for sending his police people there to stop the people who wanted to demolish a pillar of the church. They said they would bring a machine to demolish the pillar of the church. God stopped them. You don't face such things. Believe me, there is coming a time that you will not even have your Bibles with you. It's not far away. Start praying, start meditating, start reading your word. Do not forget, Jesus is your first love. Nothing else would matter. I'm going to quickly say a word of prayer to the Lord for you. Those of you who have a bad situation or a situation that can't be handled, I'm going to pray for you that Satan does not oppress you anymore. Those of you who are having a sleepless night, if you want to stand, please stand. If you feel I need special prayer, please stand. I'm going to pray for you in general. Those of you who need prayer specifically, Pastor Jim, I can use the room at the back, I think. So I will be available in the room for the prayer room and those who need me to lay hands and pray, you can come there for prayer. But those of you who need prayer, like I need prayer more than anything else, you can stand right now. I'm going to pray. Can I ask those who need prayer to please stand? Heavenly Father, I speak your blood on this dear congregation of people right now. In the holy name of Jesus, 
I claim your holiness on each and every child who wants to return to your holy fold of love. Your holy cross is real today. Your blood is real today. Your Holy Spirit is real today. And I take authority in the name of Jesus and speak against any form of wickedness or vain imagination. Every principality, every power of darkness, I command you to leave my people alone. These people are the chosen people of the kingdom of God. You dare not touch what God has anointed. Lord Jesus, your people, precious as they are, protect them by your holiness, by the power of your name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jim. Oh, thank you, Philip. Let's lift up a word for Philip here this morning. If you'd raise a hand towards him today. So, no, not lift up a hand. Not, we'll give him a hand in a minute too, but we'll, we'll lift up a hand first. So, Lord, uh, we thank you for uh, Brother Philip in our midst again today. Lord, we thank you that you would uh, take our senses of what it means to follow you, not just in this community, but to uh, what it means around the world. Lord, we pray for the orphans that we see even today live from India, and pray that in those lives that we might feel a sense of connection and your grace and your power. Lord, we thank you for the chance we have to work together. I thank you now for the power of prayer at work through Philip and in the midst of uh, this congregation. So we give it all to you and trust your continued grace and power, your truth and your righteousness. And we do it all in Christ's name and God's people said, amen. Why don't you give Philip a hand this morning? You can give a word of thanks. Thank you, Philip. Uh, Philip uh, would be glad to meet with you and pray with folks individually in the prayer room after service if that's of uh, interest to you, if you feel a sense of God's leading to have a time of prayer with Philip in the prayer room, we'd be glad to uh, have you meet him over there after service. Uh, we're uh, going to continue our sermon series today entitled Family Tree. Uh, and uh, just like we had last week, we're going to try that same video again, see if we can get some audio with it here today as uh, folks tell us who they're related to. Does it matter who you're related to? We think it does. This summer we're doing Family Tree. We've taken a few videos to find out who's related to who. I'm Tom Needs, and this is my wonderful wife, Janelle. And we have a lot of relatives, and then mostly distant relatives in the church. My name is Ben Cunningham. And who's this over here? This is my lovely wife, Taylor. Our baby girl. Yeah. And do you know do you know this other one over here? Yes, this is my sister Avery. Hi, Bo. My son Bo. Hey Bo, what's going on? Say hi, buddy. Hi. My name is Caleb. And who's your family? My parents are Luke and Tessa. My brothers are Ross and Grant, and my sister is Brooke. Hi. So what are your names? What's your name? Susie Kuhn, and I'm Katie Kuhn. And I'm Julie Weininger. And I'm her husband, Joe Weininger. My, I was born in the church, so my mom, who's 96, still goes here. And my brother and his wife uh, go here. This is my physical family, my actual brother, and then this is my brother in Christ and friend. Yeah, we have a daddy, my husband, Brett, um, and my son, Geyer. Oh my gosh, we have uh, a few members of our large family. Uh, I'm Jared Barth, this is my wife, Anna. We've got Ross Swavel, my son, Jonah Barth, my grandpa, Jim Morris, and my other cousin, Grant Swavel. Yes. Uh, Eleven grandkids. Eleven grandkids. Yes. Two of which go to Trinity here is Katie uh, Humber and Matthew Humber. This is my wife. <laughs> this is my daughter. <laughs> This is my granddaughter. Now, look at this, you can see yourself in it now. Who is that? <laughs> Who's this? Ross. Ross? Grant? Yeah. Ross? Ross? <laughs> what? Grant? Who's this guy? Who am I? Who's that? Papa. Your papa, that's right. <laughs> We are talking about family all summer long and who it is that we're related to because it matters. It matters. The people you're related to have some of the greatest influence in your life and you 
have some of the greatest influence in the lives of those people who you're related to. Your family matters. When we look at Scripture, we see the story of family after family after family. And the goal of heaven is for God to see all of his family, all of those who know him as God and Father, to come to rejoice and to be together. If you've got uh, family here, we are excited. How many of you, uh, how many of you have an in-law here with you today? Just to, just to show a hands real quick, how many have somebody that you're, you're, married, uh, you're married into their family? If they're looking at you weird, make sure you explain to them how you're their in-law, right? Right? Some of you, you come, you got married into a family, and so they bring you along now, and you're part of then the larger family. How many of you, just to show a hands real quick, how many of you have in-laws? How many of you have people in your family that you're not related to, but because of marriage, they're part of your family? Nephews-in-law, nieces-in-laws, right? Almost, almost at some level, all of us have some sort of in-laws, some sort of other side of the family. Uh, all of us, by the way, we come from two parents, just a little biology here today, two parents, which means all of you have at least two sides of a family that you came from, right? Two parents means four grandparents, means eight uh, Two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, on and on, right? By the time you get to your eight-time great-grandparents, right, uh, Bob Perkins over there. Bob Perkins, by the way, is the father-in-law of Dave Schumann. Did I get that right? Yeah. Bob's back to his eight-time great-grandparents doing his genealogy. There are a thousand of them. You have a thousand eight-times great-grandparents. That's how many people it took to make you, Right? Can you imagine how many different parts of your family it takes? Some of you are just going to do math for the rest of the service, see if that's right. That's okay. I don't mind. All right. If you want to do a Bible study on family, we encourage you to go to our Right Now Media site, and uh, you can find uh, about 216 Bible studies on family. If anything we do uh, isn't enough for you, if you want to go deeper, and we hope you do, I encourage you to go check out Right Now Media. Every person has two sides of a family. That's what we're going to talk about uh, this morning. Uh, let me show you a little bit. Uh, here, here's my favorite uncle. Let me show you my favorite uncle. Uh, my favorite uh, great uncle is a guy named Andrew Kinnear. Uh, this is his tombstone, and what it says is, uh, Reverend Andrew Kinnear was called to depart this life suddenly, but not without being prepared. Isn't that a great tombstone? Right? That's, uh, you go down to the YMCA in Marion, then you go to the next road, and there's a little graveyard just past the YMCA, and that's where you find Andrew. Uh, I love to go check out Andrew. He was part of the Methodist Church. He started the Methodist Church over in Dunkirk in about 1835, right? Then he went down, he served in Delaware, probably rode his horse right through Upper Sandusky, right? Back and forth. Uh, finally died there in Marion. Uh, I love going down to see uh, Andrew's gravestone. I stop by, uh, I don't know, a couple times. I go to the Y, check in to see Uncle Andrew and say, hey, man, I want to be prepared when the time comes, right? Uh, here's, a, here's a little bit of the other side. There's uh, James Kinnear. He's my second great-grandfather. He's Andrew's great-nephew, right? So same part of the family, but his brother's side. His father was married uh, to a lady up in Fremont, Ohio, but then, as far as I can tell in the records, he left her and the three kids in a poorhouse, got married to another lady, and headed out to Missouri. That's why the rest of my, fam my mother's side is all out in Missouri. Uh, James never went back to church. His dad left with another woman. They never went back to church. The kids never went back to church. Never darkened the door again, as far as I can tell. Uh, my grandparents then uh, had a little Baptist church down the road from them. They didn't, they didn't know Jesus at all, but they said, well, we've got to find something. They, they didn't know. I don't, I don't think they knew why they didn't go to church. I don't think they knew that. You've got to kind of dig in the records to discover that kind of stuff. Family didn't talk about it. A little Baptist church welcomed them home, and so they became Baptist. When I became Methodist, my grandpa said it was like driving a foreign car. And I laughed. I said, I don't even know what that means. He said, it's better than nothing. <laughs> what he didn't know is that the other side of the family had been Methodist. There are a bunch of Methodist preachers on the other side of the family. 
But they didn't know that. I didn't know that. Nobody talked about it. I want to tell you this morning that it's a great gift to be positive about your family. God commands us to honor our father and mother. And I don't think you have to limit yourself. I don't think when God gave that command, it was a legalistic thought that you have to honor just your father and mother. I think there's a command in our life that says if you honor your family, that there is a blessing in that. That's not always easy. No family is perfect. There are plenty of parts of our family that we're going to struggle with. In fact, when you come up this morning, if you want to pray for your family, every family has places in need of prayer. But just because there are places in need of prayer doesn't mean that we say, God, thank you for the journey that you brought my family through, whatever it was. When we look back at our family tree, as you go up that family tree, there are multiple folks, each with their own struggles, each with their own stories, but every one of them ends up to be the person you are. Uh, here in Wyandotte County, let me give you uh, two names real quick. Uh, and if I get these wrong, I see Betty needs in the back there. Betty's going to correct me because I want to make sure that I don't, don't get any of this wrong. But here, we're going to talk about Adam and Eve in a minute. This is kind of like Adam and Eve of Wyandotte County, right? A guy named Lamar Walton married a Catherine Korfman Hufford back in 19, 18, 1849. Now, Catherine had eight brothers and sisters. Uh, together, Lamar and Catherine uh, will have ten kids. By the way, they were members of the evangelical church. You can go to the genealogy room at the library, pull out the book, get all that information about Lamar uh, when he moved here to Wyandotte County. Uh, they marry a couple of other folks in the county, and pretty soon you're all related, right? Right? That's, that's at least one of the places where you can trace it back to. Uh, either, uh, either Mary or Sarah or Willis or Eliza or Samuel or Isaiah or Anne or Levi or Jasper or Alan or Florence. Some of those people somewhere end up in most of our family trees. All families leave a legacy. The families that we're a part of leave a legacy to us. Now, I want to talk about the very first family today. The very first family of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are the original start of every family. We are all related through Adam and Eve. We used to just say that in the church. And now that we can do DNA testing, you know what, you know what scientists would tell you? That all of us are related. That it just takes about... Uh, Go back about 3,500 years, and there's a common ancestor that all of us have. That's not, that's not just taking Genesis, that's taking your DNA. Fascinating when science and what we've always said the Bible says lines up together. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female, he created them. In that one verse, we have the sanctity of life, that all life is created in the image of God. In that one verse, we have the covenant of marriage, that Adam and Eve are literally made for each other. And that God puts them together as the perfect plan. We have the innocence of their love. They walked naked and unashamed. They were in charge of all that God had made, and everything was as it should be. Let us never take that away from Adam and Eve and our very first set of parents on this earth. But the problem is, the problem in Adam and Eve's family, let's make sure we understand that Adam and Eve are also the place where sin begins. That sin is ultimately then, in their disobedience, what casts them out from that perfection. Everything that God had intended in the garden is ruined by sin. Everything that God had intended is ruined by sin. That's why all families have problems. All families have problems. Every family, and this is where if we don't talk about it, we never know it. If you never sit down, and I'm not saying I want you to get up and talk bad about your family from the pulpit. But I'm saying that at least somewhere in some conversations with a friend or maybe with your family itself, you should sit down and say, I want to make sure I understand why some of the things I do aren't the perfect plan that God would have for us. 
why we struggle with the sanctity of life, why sometimes we don't think either our own life is worth living or why as a culture we say some life doesn't really count until it gets old enough, why we struggle with the covenant of marriage, why it's hard to get married and stay married and committed to each other. Why it's hard to stay in that place of an innocence of love, to stay focused on the work of the Spirit, that first love that Philip talks about. Because sin entered the world in that first act of disobedience, and all of us inherit that sin of Adam and Eve. That's why you can pray for your families. Because even if your family, even if you think right now, even if you're in a moment where things are pretty good, I promise you that the devil is doing everything he can to tear apart our families and take away from people the chance to hear the gospel. Here's the verse I want to look at with us this morning. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. It talks about both sides this morning of our family. It says, for as an Adam, all die. That's the Adam side of our family. So in Christ, all will be made alive. Those are two very different sides of our spiritual family tree. All our problems result from sin. Because all of us are in Adam... All of us face the problems and then the consequences of sin. Now, the world would tell us that, in fact, Adam's side has a lot, a lot that we should have pride in. In fact, the world today would say there's a lot of pride in Adam's side, that if you're not proud of all that side of Adam that you have, you're really, you just don't love yourself enough. But it's not true. The consequences of sin is spiritual and physical death. And that's true for all of us. All of us in that sin from Adam inherit the reality of spiritual and physical death. That's not what God intended. That's not what we're designed to be. So there's something in us that that says sin is not what I was created for. There's something in us, and the world says, let's just be proud of who we are. And if who we are is that divine image, if who we are is what God created us for, there is a great deal of of gratitude that we should have for God. But if what we talk about being proud of is our sin, then we miss the chance for any solution. We end up living in a world of shattered families. I was amazed when I went to the genealogy and found in the census uh, my second great-grandfather's wife and three kids in the poorhouse. There were a lot of those, by the way, 100, 150 years ago. There they are in the midst of about 39 other names, all living at the same address, all of them living there, for some reason or another, destitute. The brokenness of families leads to unnecessary poverty. God created our families to be a place of strength and support. And so one of the reasons, even as a church family, we find it important to say, how do we continue to work on on the sin that so easily entangles us? How do we work on making sure we keep Adam's side away from us? Is because once that sin enters in, it ruins what God had intended. But here's the good news, that Adam's family curse can be reversed. That Adam's family curse is reversed when we become a part of Christ's family. You see, there are two sides to your family, not just your physical family, not just the family you married into, not just your in-laws or your outlaws, but the spiritual family God designed all of us for, the side of sinner and fallen, but also the side of Savior and forgiven. All of us come from one human family, biologically, genetically, all people are related. But there is also the choice to be part of the family of Christ. 
That is not about your DNA. It is not about your family name. It doesn't matter whether or not Lamar Walton is in your family tree or not. It doesn't matter if your grandfather left his family. It doesn't matter what struggles you've come from. It's a question of where you are right now. It's the question of whether or not we make a decision to believe and receive the work of Christ in our life. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, it says this, starting in verse 12, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Isn't that interesting that that the Gospel of John doesn't say we, we start out as children of God. The Gospel of John says when we believe in him, we get the right to become the children of God. You had no choice about the family you're born into. But you have all sorts of choice about the family you become and the family you decide to be a part of. Children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. That's the new birth. That's the born again decision that Jesus is after for all of us. If you want to break the curse of Adam that's in your family, and all of us have the curse of Adam in our family. All of us have the curse of Adam in our family. You've got to say, how do I break that curse? How do I get past that curse that I have of wanting to disobey, of not trusting and believing what God has said? I want to give you a practical vision for curse breaking. A practical vision for curse breaking. Whew, that sounds interesting to me. That'd be clickbait on the internet. Right? How, what, what, is, what is that? I want to ask you to think about your funeral. That moment when you become part of your genealogy. And you get a funeral record and people can look back at your life. I want you to ask yourself, what are people going to celebrate? What are people going to say? Can I tell you, and, and this is something that I... I just learned more and more that, that one of the great moments of evangelism in your life is a moment you won't be there for. Now that, that's, that's humbling. That's humbling to say one of the greatest moments of my family's life is going to be the moment when I'm not there anymore. But they're all going to gather. They're all going to get together and they're all going to get to decide what do we say about this person. Oh, she loved Walmart. Mm. Nothing like going to Walmart with Grandma. As grandma went to Walmart all the time. She was a coupon cutter. That Grandma, she loved to save money. Is that, is that going to be it? Is that going to be it? Oh, Grandpa. Woo. Grandpa. Mm. Yep, Grandpa. <laughs> you ever been one of those? What would you like me to say? Nothing. That's a... That's a chance that we get to decide, Lord, I want to make sure I live my life in such a way that when the time comes for my testimony to be given, that when the last memory of my life is read, that people celebrate the fact that they know that I love them, that they were forgiven, that they lived in grace and peace, and that I am now in a place where all things are made new. I found an obituary of a lady named Kathleen, I believe, uh, there's Kathleen. It gives a little bit of her information. She was married to Dennis over there, it says. Uh, in the third paragraph, it says in 1962, she became pregnant by her husband's brother, Lyle, and moved to California. She abandoned her children. Jean and Jay were raised by her parents in Clements, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Schunk. She passed away May 31st, 2018 in Springfield and will now face judgment. She will not be missed by Gina and Jay, and they understand this world is a better place without her. Don't, don't let your kids write your obituary. <laughs> they paid for that to be printed in the newspaper. They even put her picture in it. Wow. Do not, do not choose to miss the opportunity to know that your testimony would be shared with your family. You can reverse the curse and release the blessing. 
Not because of Adam's side. There is no pride in Adam's side. There is only grace in the side of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelations chapter 22 verse 3 says this about that place where we go as followers of Jesus. It says no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city. His servants will serve him. Whew, that's going to be a great place to go. That's going to be the greatest family reunion ever. I worked with a set of folks once at their uh, funeral, and, and one side wasn't going to come to the other side. And I finally had to ask, I said, why aren't you going to come to your brother's funeral? And she said, because he took the electric knife. I said, what do you mean? She said, back at Thanksgiving, about 50 years ago, he took my electric knife, and he's never apologized. It's true! That's, but now listen, this is the kind of stuff, if you've never done your genealogy, right? In the midst of those thousand eight times great grandparents, I promise you that some of us are related. Some of us have the same family curses. Some of us have been doing the same things over and over ago in our families. Some families are now so far away from the church that some church is going to have to go get them. Because what you don't know is somebody else left them out of church some other time. Some generation before them had failed them. Some pain has come into their life that only believers can say, you know what, there's more to this life because we're willing to be your family. We're willing to walk with you through that healing. To reverse the curse, you receive Christ. It reverses that curse of Adam. Your sins are forgiven. You get the immediate grace and love and forgiveness that come as part of being the children of God. But I don't want you to leave you with all that that is because you also have to follow Christ. Not simply to say that I'm a believer, but to say I'm a follower, to be willing to become a disciple, to release the blessing. To say, Lord, you've got to show some growth in my life. You've got to make me a disciple. You've got to give me discipline. You've got to help me live with righteousness. That's how we release the blessings in our family. Not only to live in a way that God has given us his grace and his love and his forgiveness, but then to live and grow in such a way to discipline ourselves, to give that same love to others. That in the midst of those who would take pride in Adam's side, to walk as those who are followers of Christ to say, it won't change the fact that we love you. It won't change the fact that I'm going to continue to pray for you. It won't ever stop the love of God from pursuing you. It means we open our Bibles, we spend time in prayer, we discipline ourselves to come and worship together, to hold one another up in the midst of all that happens to us. It is our mission as a church to know Christ and to make Him known. Two weeks ago, this, or just last week, just last week, this was the picture at 10 o'clock service. Boy, that's a great picture. I love those pictures up from the tech booth when we gather folks and pray for them whether it's our young people or Mexico or Honduras. We pray, bless these folks who go from us. Bless them to do your will. Bless them to grow in your strength. And when the time comes that we bless one another to go to eternity, may it come with a family blessing that proclaims the grace and love of believing in Jesus, but the evangelism and the opportunity to share that same with those who would come after us as well. May your family be blessed today, even, even in the midst of our brokenness. I'm going to pray and we're going to sing. There are prayer cards up front on the prayer rails. If you've got a place in your family that you'd like to pray for, maybe a person, maybe an attitude of your own heart, I encourage you to come up and just take a prayer card if you want. If you want to spend time in prayer here, that's fine. If you want Philip to pray for you in some way, he'll meet you over in the prayer room. As we continue to say, God, thank you for making us the family that you desire us to be. And so, God, I thank you for your love for us. Lord, I thank you for the original plan of perfection. 
And God, every day we come to repent of those ways in which we fall short. Lord, repentance in our marriages and with our children, repentance with our parents and with our in-laws. Lord, repentance within your own family that keeps us from being all that we should be for you. And so fill us again today, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for your grace and forgiveness, which is never-ending. Lord, new every morning. And so we pray your strength in this congregation and in all places that call upon your name. That with all who have faithfully lived and died, we might be followers, disciples of Jesus Christ, who loved his earthly family and made it possible for us all to be part of one heavenly family. For we give you thanks and praise and lift it up in Christ's name, and all God's people said, Amen. We invite you to stand as we prepare and sing our final song.
Well, you can come up after service if you'd like to get a prayer card. Now, there are also some at the door as you go. Next Sunday, we're going to have Family Sunday, and next Sunday night, we're going to meet down at Uncle Harrison's Park <laughs> for some swimming and barbecue, and all are invited. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make His face to shine upon you and give you His peace from this day forward until we all meet again. Amen. God bless. Have a great week.